Bonjour, I'm Luca with La Toye du Francais, and today we're going to explore a French icon together. An icon is a person who is adored for having an immense influence in a particular scope, and today's scope is la mode. On y va? Have you ever heard of the legendary French icon Coco Chanel? No? Let's talk about her. On August 19th, 1883, Gabrielle Bonnet Chanel, soon to become Coco Chanel, was born in a little village that is actually very near and dear to my heart, called Saumur, a small town in the Loire. You would never have been able to tell by looking at a photo of the opulent grand dame of fashion that Chanel built herself up to, but the reality is, throughout her upbringing, Gabrielle Bonner Chanel lived in absolute squalor. Her mother, Eugene Jean de Vaux, was an unmarried laundry woman, and her father, Albert Chanel, was a peddler who traveled from village to village, selling clothing to whoever would buy them. Chanel learned how to sew at a very young age in order to assist her father with his enterprise, a skill that would be vital to her future rise to fame and glory. However, when Chanel was barely 12 years old, her mother had passed away. Her father, unable to care for her and her siblings, sent his sons to go work on a farm and his daughters to live in a convent. Here, Chanel would be disciplined by very strict nuns. Even at this incredibly young age, Chanel understood the importance of self-image, and she had decided to teach herself how to carry herself more as a lady and less like an orphan. Taking it one step further, Chanel learned how to become an excellent liar, trying to mask her embarrassing circumstances from the world she fervently denied being an orphan and constructed stories of being raised by her aunts as her father is often away on business preventing anyone from truly understanding just how rough her upbringing was as you can imagine at this point in history job opportunities for women were few and far between Fortunately, she was able to use her sewing skills, which she had learned from her father, to find work as a seamstress, creating beautiful garments for the wealthy women of Moulin. During the night, however, Chanel would work as a singer in a nightclub. Here is where she would adopt the name Coco, allegedly because it came from a song she would often sing, a claim that Chanel would vehemently deny, instead claiming that she adopted the name because it was short for the French word cocotte, which could be used to mean a well-kept woman, a stark difference from the image of a nightclub singer. Kept woman would prove to be an appropriate term for Chanel as she was able to launch her business because of the financial support of her lover, Arthur Capel. You see, at the time, women weren't allowed to possess a bank account, let alone a business, without a guarantor. And her partner, Arthur Capel, saw Chanel's brilliance. He strongly believed in her, and soon the two went into business together. And together, the two launched the very first Chanel boutique ever, located in Deauville, year 1910. Capel's name was on everything, but Chanel ran every aspect of the business. And as business boomed, Chanel employed more and more women as workers, which was a rarity for this time. It's rather ironic to think that as Chanel's designs grew in popularity, the aristocratic women who once looked down on Chanel were now desperate to wear her designs. Despite proving herself to be a formidable designer whose products were obscenely lucrative, the banks still refused to do business with her after the death of her partner, Capel, because she was a woman. This is when she would seek the help from businessman Pierre Wertheimer, a mistake she would soon come to regret. It is important to remember that her partner, Capel, gave her full control over the business and even let her keep the proceeds entirely to herself. So naturally, Chanel was a bit too trusting of Wertheimer, and he took full advantage of her naivety and lack of understanding of business contracts. Chanel ended up signing a contract that would force her to fork over 90% of her business profits to Wertheimer. As absurd of a deal as this was, it still allowed for Coco Chanel to stay in business. Moving forward from this point, the house of Chanel would suffer from major controversies, particularly surrounding Coco's romantic involvement with a high-ranking Nazi. During Nazi-occupied Paris, many French businesses were destroyed, but Chanel, at her core, was an opportunist and understood that the continuation of her business and comfortable life relied on guarding a relationship with German aristocrat von Dinklage. At one point, Chanel even moved from her Paris townhome to a suite at the Ritz, which just so happened to be where the Nazis would set up headquarters. The Nazis even deployed Chanel to work as a spy, undergoing missions all around Western Europe. Perhaps hoping that Chanel could influence the many powerful people she had befriended over the years, such as Winston Churchill. The fact that Chanel complied is unsurprising, as she had hoped to gain something further from the Nazis. The 90% stake in her business, which was possessed by Wertheimer, who happened to be a Jewish businessman. 
Chanel never legally atoned for her crime of conspiring with the Nazis. Like all the other unsavory aspects of her life, Chanel never spoke of them, perhaps hoping that by not acknowledging her wrongdoings, it could become a distant memory in the minds of the public. After the war, Chanel retired from the fashion industry, taking refuge in Switzerland, as Paris no longer welcomed her. Only to return to the fashion game at the ripe old age of 75, Chanel made this decision because she was disgusted with the turn that the fashion world had taken since her departure. She particularly detested Dior's designs, which stood against everything she believed in, women's liberation. She often mocked Dior's creation, saying, he doesn't dress women, he upholsters them. She continued working until her passing in 1971, an event that shook the fashion world. Coco Chanel would be succeeded by a man named Karl Lagerfeld, who took inspiration from Chanel's past to move into the future. Lagerfeld's designs drastically increased the brand's popularity, completely reviving the brand. Even today, after the death of Lagerfeld, the brand is continuously evolving while still staying true to what Chanel is at its core. Just take a look at the latest Chanel show, which took place last week in Marseille. Despite her murky and complicated life story, it is undeniable that Coco Chanel completely changed the fashion industry and a woman's place in the world. Stylish comfort was always Chanel's top priority. As she said herself, luxury must be comfortable, otherwise it is not luxury. Instead of women being restricted by corsets and ridiculously overly ornate gowns, Chanel created the little black dress, completely changing and liberating women from restrictive formal wear and ushering in a new era of comfort. Additionally, Chanel created the first popular shoulder bag. Prior to this, women would carry a clutch bag that required you to hold them with one or both hands. Chanel 2.55 shoulder bag freed up women's hands. Or even more likely, her greatest creation, tweed skirt suits. Today, it might sound silly to be praising tweed suits as innovative or even modern, but the reality is Chanel creating tweed tailoring for women provided them with the freedom to move easier and to feel as empowered as a man in a man's world. Her style of women's wear truly was reflective of the ideals she had held regarding women in the world, as she had employed many women when job opportunities were few and far between for them, as Chanel believed a woman can be anyone she wants to be. Whether or not you like Coco Chanel as a person does not change the fact that she revolutionized fashion for women. But however we may judge this French fashion icon is of little consequence. Because as she once so epically said, I don't care what you think about me, I don't think about you at all. Thank you so much for watching this episode of French Icons by Latoya du Français. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe.